is Emily. Welcome everyone. I'm spending a beautiful mid-June day in the state of Alabama. Plus there's fresh beef jerky in a mile. <laughs> I'm gonna see some roadside attractions in this area of Alabama, then head a little west, then head south from there. Gonna be a great day. Let's go. I start my day in Gadsden, on the shores of the Coosa River, and crossing the river is this classic Art Deco bridge. This is the Etowah Memorial Bridge. It was built in 1927 and is about two tenths of a mile long. The memorial is for, for those from this area that gave their lives serving their country in World War I. Also, here is this wooden railroad bridge. Wooden except where it crosses the water. Now driving on the bridge, it's a fairly wide two-lane bridge. It's not too busy right now. This road leads directly to the main downtown area. As for us, we've got a long day ahead of us. So let's make our way west to our next stop. A little west of Coleman, and I'm at a small park with a covered bridge. This is the Clarkson Covered Bridge. It was built way back in 1904 and was regularly used by vehicles to cross Crooked Creek. The bridge is also on the National Register of Historic Places. This is a lovely park and I can hear water falling from somewhere. This marker says this is sometimes called the Leg Bridge. The bridge is 270 feet long was destroyed by a flood in 1921 and rebuilt a year later. The bridge was restored as a pedestrian-only bridge in 1975. Over there is the newer bridge. That bridge looks a little old as well. The park area is on this side of the bridge. A little bit of graffiti on this stone wall. Looks like Crooked Creek is down there. This marker looks like it could have been taken out of an Alabama geology textbook. This talks about the regions of Alabama and also the type of rock that is prevalent in this area. Now walking back in the other direction, the floorboards are not very even, so I have to watch my steps as I'm not crossing this bridge. I found the waterfall. It's next to this water wheel and cabin.
Lay down to the creek to make those small lakes. Closer look at the cabin, it appears to be closed. It definitely adds to the ambiance here. Nice side view of the covered bridge. There's a website that takes you on a tour of seven great covered bridges in this state, and the Clarkson Bridge is on that list. I'll have to check out the other covered bridges at some point. Time to head to my next spot, which is not far away. About a mile away is Arrington's Transmissions. There is a green car half buried in the ground. This is definitely interesting enough to pull over and take a look. This car appears to be gutted. No car seats or anything in this car. Also what's interesting is the car windows are raised on this side of the car, but, on the, but not on the other side. This looks like a busy auto repair shop too. This is on busy US 278 and it's gotten busier over the last few years. I just noticed this. Look at their mailbox. This is made out of a transmission. That's a really neat idea. On my way to the next stop, which is a little while south southwest of here. Now in the town of Jasper, Alabama. This town was bypassed about 10 years ago when they finished Interstate 22. I will say we had a fail in this town. We were looking for the Townley Toilet Rest Area and we took a wrong turn. We didn't have a lot of time to look for it, so we decided to proceed to our next destination. We're getting on the brand new Interstate 22. They have been building this highway since the 1980s and the final 30 miles was completed in October 2015. Interstate 22 starts a little east of Memphis, Tennessee and ends just a little north of downtown Birmingham. And here is the eastern end of I-22. It dead ends at Interstate 65. We're heading south from here. We've now officially traveled not only all of Interstate 22, but every single mile of Interstate Highway in the state of Alabama. Now on Interstate 65, and the downtown Birmingham skyline is in view. My next stop is about half an hour south of here. Now in the community of Calera, Alabama. In front of me is this rock dome which is designated a house of prayer. Not sure if these clothes and backpack belong to somebody. There's a container of prayers written on notebook paper, and some CDs, votive candles, and also some Bibles. The Bible is open to Isaiah chapters 45 to 47. I'm not sure why someone left it on this particular page. 
This dome kind of looks like a Christmas ornament, especially with the metal topper on top of the dome. This is known as the Rock Igloo Prayer House and was constructed in the 1970s by a retired Alabama policeman who wanted to construct a durable roadside chapel. Also, people have left flowers at the entrance to the dome. Not sure why people have left tomato soup, mac and cheese, carrots, and cake frosting. Do you know? Have you been here? Leave me a comment. Now inside the city of Montevallo, driving on this dirt road to my next stop. It's not bad. I'm just a fourth of a mile off the main thoroughfare. I reached Reynolds Cemetery, and this large white granite slab is what I'm here to see. The white slab knows that I'm at the Geographic Center of Alabama. The slab has been defaced quite a bit. But you can definitely see the slab was placed here in 1955 by the Chamber of Commerce. Behind that slab is what looks like a large pile of rocks and a gravestone marker way up there. Looks like Elizabeth Seal and David Adams were buried up there in the early 1890s. I've now been to the center of Georgia, Tennessee, California, and now Alabama, as well as the center of the U.S. and the center of North America. I have one more stop in Montevallo. I'm at Tinglewood Ore Park. It's a nice sized park with this calming stream. Also lots of green space and walking trails. But there's also something unique about some of the trees here. Some of these trees ha have faces carved into them. We're looking faces like this one. This one has a whole body carved into this tree. Over here, this one looks like a wizard with a long beard. This one looks like an evil elf with large ears and look at those teeth. Great details but kind of creepy. Look at this one. Looks like a woman wearing some sort of head covering. Walking on the other side, this basket full of fruits and some small animals, I think. Wow, here's a dragon in this tree, complete with a pointed tail. Is this an owl sitting on top of a skull? That's pretty weird. This is a nice jogging area with a stream next to it and a bunch of trees staring at you. There are about 30 or so trees that have been carved. This one is 
Just a piece of wood that's carved up and placed on a concrete pad. This one looks like a duck with some crazy hair that looks like Medusa. This park it definitely is interesting. Anyway, time to head further south to my next stop. Now heading to the city of Clanton. You might notice on the right this large structure that has an orange or something on it. Let's check it out. This is a water tower for the city of Clanton, decorated in the shape of a peach. Apparently Clanton is the peach capital of the state of Alabama. This water tower was constructed in 1992. This water tower is 120 feet tall and holds 500,000 gallons of water. Do you see that notch or micro tail at the bottom of the peach? That looks so incredibly strange. The fruit stand is over there where they sell fresh peaches and other items. There's another big peach in clan I have to see. It's just a few miles south of here, so let's take a look. First I have to get gas at this mobile. Current price is four dollars and fifty five cents. This gas pump is playing some interesting music as I fill up my tank. Down this road is the next great peach found in Clanton. And I have Peach Park, which is a large farmer's market that sells produce, fried pies, and ice cream. Over there is the other large peach monument. Getting a closer look at this peach. Not nearly as large as the water tower, not as round either. I don't, know, I don't know about you, but this peach kind of looks like an orange bell pepper. I think this peach is an imposter. Look at it. It's not round. It's kind of long. Like a bell pepper. I think they just painted it orange and yellow and red and painted this some brown color. What do you think? Leave me a comment. Anyway, I've got about a 90 minute drive south of my next destination. I just learned the sun sets around here at, at just 7.45 p.m. So I hope I make it down there before it gets too dark. I'm near the city of Op, and it's a baby wearing just a diaper, picking their nose. As you can see, it's just about completely dark, and it's been raining. I'm in Florala, about a mile from the Florida state line, and this is a big bass fish. Much of Alabama is known for their bass fishing, and Florala is no exception, with Lake Jackson not far from where I am. I last visited Florala a few years ago. Florala, gateway to the Gulf. I'll be back here tomorrow afternoon on my way back home. I'll get a better look at this cool painted mural in the sunshine. And that's it for this video filled with great roadside attractions in Alabama. If you know of any interesting places to see in the southeastern part of the U.S., please send me a comment. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye!